So what we have here is Anabina, uh, probably Sir Sinalis. And here you can see a lot of spirals uh, forming filamentous structures. They are cyanobacteria. And then interesting in that they're probably the first multicellular organism. Um, each one of these segments here is actually a cyanobacterial cell. Uh, they are photosynthetic, hence their name, um, sort of blue-green algae, but they're actually a type of bacteria. And they cause toxic algal blooms, which tend to kill a lot of livestock, and they can also kill fish. Uh, fish tend to avoid these algal mats and this is how they they don't die um, when they, when you have these toxins however toxic algal blooms however they if the dam or water body dries or is drained and they come in co into contact with these algae that's when they come get into problems so blue green algae blooms tend to occur in sort of calm warm shallow bodies of water uh, and with the water conditions being hard and alkaline and also rich in nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphates, carbonates and organic matter. So this one, Anabina, uh, they produce neurotoxins and death tends to result from paralysis of skeletal and respiratory muscles. Um, and I guess if humans come into contact with this, they can get some skin irritation and eye irritations. And some of the toxins released from blue-green algae may be cause of unexplained forms of the gast human gastroenteritis. Well, fish that die from toxic algae, they tend to die uh, with their mouths gaping open. Um, and they tend to be sort of gasping at the water surface. Fish don't die just from the toxins produced. Um, they can also die as a result of oxygen depletion uh, from the water as the algae consumes the oxygen. Let's have a scan around to look for other bits of floating algae. Uh, this slide is drying up a little bit, uh, that's why What else can we say about uh, this anabina? Um, they, the toxins that they produce, uh, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's known as anatoxin, and they can also produce a toxin called paralytic shellfish toxin. Uh, it and PST uh, is in the class of poisons known as saxi toxins. And saxi toxins were actually used, um, I guess, in the times of war as a suicide pill. So if you get caught, uh, they swallow this pill and they sort of die as a result of this. Um, I suspect that this might have been the toxin that they used um, in X-Men, I think. Wolverine got out of... Um, of their being captured by swallowing this sort of pill, uh, making him look like he had died, but he hadn't. Or was that? I can't remember. Maybe it was um, the A team. Probably the A team. Anyway, we have deviated from uh, what we're talking about here. Um, so let's have a look at the algae. So here we have the algae, and they tend to be floating on the surface. And I guess to capture this, you'd have to see which way the wind was blowing, because um, the algae can sort of accumulate in those areas. Um, we'll try and focus in on this. Yep. So we're focused now. Um, and if you get this sample in real life, um, it will produce a, for a pretty characteristic pungent or musky earthy smell to it. Um, what else can we say about this? Yeah, I guess in terms of um, control of this algae, um, you can use several chemical methods. Um, some of them include simazine, 
copper sulfate um, and chlorine uh, that would kill the algal cells chemically. Um, you can also use ferric alum to sort of mop up any of the phosphates. Um, and also maybe barley straw may be able to biologically create um, or grow bacteria that would eat the algal cells. Um, other things you could do is also competitively inhibit the algae. So you may think about introducing um, aquatic plants such as water lilies or fully submerged aquatic plants to sort of um, consume all the um, things that the algae needs to use such as light and also nutrients in the water. Um, yeah, I think there was one other thing I was going to say which was uh, also yeah, limiting um, sort of water runoff into the water bodies which can carry with it a lot of nutrients but I guess in a dam situation, in a farm dam uh, you do want the runoff to be able to collect the water so I guess you're in a sort of a tough situation there so I guess if you have a dam maybe dig it make sure it's deeper so that it can actually contain water um, at a cooler temperature so that it doesn't get too hot um, thereby aiding in the development of algae um, yeah I think that's about it but um, if you do have fish, I guess the safest ways are to sort of competitively inhibit the algae by using um, aquatic plants. Um, simazine is fairly safe as well. It's uh, available um, in pond stores and also at um, agricultural produce places. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it um, on my blog. Or on my web page you may be able to find inf more information about uh, treating algae problems uh, thefishvet.com.au thank you